plan. No one else was injured in that incident. All right, the fight continues for the young woman who was accused of hiring a hitman to knock off her husband. Dahlia Dipolito is her name, and she's laying out her defense once all charges against her dropped. Now, she seems to be fighting an uphill battle, though, because police were tipped off. They staged the elaborate sting operation. You're seeing part of that here to catch her. She's convicted in 2011. That conviction, though, was thrown out because of a bad jury. So now a Florida judge is deciding if Dipolito gets a new trial or if she's going to walk. She meets undercover agent Woody Jean because she wants to kill her husband, Mike Dipolito. When it's done, you know, you have to have an option to change your mind, even if you change your mind. No, there's no, like, I'm, I'm concerned about already. I'm positive, like, 5,000% sure. You know, I was in love with my wife. I thought we were, we were doing well. I'm a lot tougher than what I look. I know you're right. like, oh, what a cute little girl, whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry to call you. Listen, we had a report of a disturbance at your house, and there were shots fired. Is your husband Michael? Okay, I'm sorry to tell you, man. He's been killed. <laughs> he's, he's been killed, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Try to calm down. Right now, we need to get you to the We need to get you to the police station. I can't look at him, man. We have to do our job. Did you see any tears? No, I did not. Your husband is well and alive. Thank God. Oh, yeah, thank God. Can I see him? No, he doesn't want to see you. I'm being accused of something that I didn't do. Muhammad was on an episode of Burn Notice, and we were trying to simulate the episode that he was on. It was a um, murder for hire episode. So there is the defense. This is all an act in one of her defense attorneys, and we welcome him back, Brian Claypool. Brian, welcome. All right, the question here is, what anyway. proof do you have that uh, Dahlia DiPolito hiring a hitman was an act? Hey, Mike, before I get into that, let me just tell your audience that you, you've known me for years. Difficult cases in the criminal justice system give us an opportunity to make profound change in our community. And when I first talked to Dahlia DiPolito, when she called me, when she got a retrial, I took the case because it's bigger than Dahlia DiPolito. This case involves civil rights. And, and this case involves everybody who's watching your show, everybody across the country who's ever been victimized by a corrupt police department. And I took this case because it's an opportunity to raise awareness about the power that police departments have in undercover investigations and how ripe they are for corruption. This case is about a pathetic criminal investigation that had no integrity. It's not about the videotapes that the whole world has seen. Okay, so we see it from our vantage point and we're like, hey, she wanted the husband dead, police filmed it. Right. Uh, where's the corruption? Right. Well, well, let me tell you about that, Mike. What everybody's done in this case is they've, 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 they've looked at the conclusion of the book and not looked at chapters 1 through 10. Let's talk about chapters 1 through 10. Dahlia DiPolito was backing out of this project that she was doing with this undercover informant, Muhammad Shahadi. She didn't want to go through with this anymore. The police department knew that. What they did, Mike, is they failed to record hundreds of phone calls between the informant and Dahlia. What they also did is they failed to give the informant a recording device that they had available. And they failed to record a critical 40 minute conversation between Dahlia and the informant right before you see that tape where she's in the truck with Witty Jean, the undercover hitman. Dahlia was threatened by the informant to go through with this right before she goes into that truck with the undercover hitman. Why, you might ask, Mike? Because the police department had threatened to prosecute the informant unless he continued on this investigation to get Dahlia on tape, all for a sensational episode on the TV show Cops. Okay. That's a mockery of our criminal justice system. Well, you mentioned, and you've laid out the defense that you guys are trying to prove here. So let's listen to Dahlia herself uh, basically laying it out there that she, this is not an act, but police or ultimately it's through them that she's forced to go through with this. Here she is. I didn't want to go through with um, actual law enforcement being involved in the project that we were working on. And so Muhammad asked me to meet him at the Chili's. So 
we could talk about everything. He, he wanted to know why I didn't want to do this anymore. He got really upset and he was threatening me. He was putting a lot of pressure on me and didn't understand, you know, why we couldn't just go ahead and follow um, the plan. He said that he had gone to the police department and now he was getting a lot of pressure from them that they were threatening him and that now we needed to just move forward with everything. Okay, that articulates the point you're making. The question coming off that and the challenge to you guys is this. You, you're, what proof do you have? I mean, I know she'd mentioned in court there were no text messages. It was all phone calls. Isn't that tough on you to, in defending her? It's, it's not tough on us when you look at the depth of the, of the police corruption that led up to this, Mike. You have an informant that was terrified. He wanted out of this investigation. You have a desperate police department trying to get Dahlia to sign false waiver forms for the cops TV show. You have the former police of Chile, the former police chief, Mike, who was ready to throw a big viewing party at his house to watch the cops episode. Every ounce of integrity in this investigation was thrown out the door to create a sensational episode for a cops TV show. Okay. Okay, so do you have Mohammed Shahade day, hey, Mike, ready to testify to oh, say this, that yeah, this he, is the truth? Yeah, Mike, yeah. Great question. He testified a month ago. What we have pending is a motion to throw out all the charges against Dahlia based on what's called objective entrapment in Florida. And what that means, Mike, in a nutshell, is in Florida, there's a, there's a, there's a doctrine where you look at just the police misconduct and determine whether that violated Dahlia's due process constitutional rights. That's all it focuses on. The court's not supposed to be focusing on what subjectively Dahlia wanted to do. The undercover informant, Mike, has already testified under oath that when he went into the police department, he didn't think Dahlia had done anything serious. He didn't think she had committed a crime. He didn't want to be involved in the investigation. And all he did, Mike, is he said to them, hey, just give her a call and take care of things and everything will be taken care of. Well, now, what the police department did, Mike, is they changed their whole agenda. They broke all the rules hmm. to try to get what you've got, Dahlia, on tape. There you go. All right. Okay. Well, we know Michael DiPolito, he denies involvement. We have, need to say that as well. We'll see how this one plays out. Real quick, right. 10 seconds. When do you expect the judge to decide, trial or not? Right. Well, we, we have to file additional legal briefing by Monday of next week. Okay. I expect you're going to hear a ruling on this within a week after that. Got it. Good seeing you, Brian. Keep us posted on how things go. Great we'll be definitely you, watching. All right. How about this? Uh, Great.